Welcome to Ring Theory. I have found that it is the small everyday deed of ordinary folk that keep the darkness at bay. Small acts of kindness and love. Gandalf, J.R.R. Tolkien, The Hobbit. In this series of videos, I'll be taking inspiration from this quote and focusing in on the unsung heroes of Middle-earth. In today's episode, I'll be looking at perhaps a surprising candidate, Denethor, the steward of Gondor. Ironically, considering the quote this series of videos is based on, Denethor did not like or trust Gandalf. In fact, he was an untrusting man in general. Due to this, his inability to eat cherry tomatoes, and the fact that he appeared to try to burn his son alive, he tends to have a bit of a bad reputation amongst the Lord of the Rings fandom. This is perhaps justified, but by giving you the chance to know him better, and giving a little context to his actions, I hope to convince you that he warrants his place as an unsung hero of Middle-earth by the conclusion of this video. Denethor II was the penultimate steward of Gondor in the Third Age at the time of the War of the Ring. He was the only son and third child of Icthelion II. During his early years becoming a man in Gondor, he would have seen Sauron re-establish himself in Mordor and the re-eruption of Mount Doom, all virtually on the doorstep of his home. He was known to be a noble and intellectually sharp individual who could perceive the thoughts of others. It was also almost impossible to deceive him. He became ruling steward in the year 2984 of the Third Age, eight years after his marriage to Finduilas of Dol Amroth. He both adored and loved his wife, having two sons, Boromir and Faramir. Unfortunately, an event then occurs which appears to have changed him significantly. A few short years after becoming ruling steward, his wife Finduilas fell ill and died at age 38. This was a huge blow for Denethor, who never remarried. He would become more serious, grim and bitter than before. Not long after, he would spend many an hour in his tower studying the law of Gondor, including the use of the Palantir. It was here he foresaw the assault on his beloved Minas Tirith. Denethor was anything but the fool he was portrayed to be in the films. By using the Palantir, he is essentially spying on Sauron and was doing this for several decades. Although Gandalf states he only sees what Sauron allows him to see, he was actually proven more effectively to resist the will of Sauron than Saruman, who was a wizard and a Maya. For a mortal man to wrestle with Sauron for decades in the Palantir was some feat, though it did come at great personal cost. Denethor was actually a similar age to Aragorn, and with Numenorean blood, like Aragorn himself, should have looked similar. However, the long years in this mental battle with Sauron using the Palantir rapidly aged him. In addition, knowledge of the Dark Lord's forces amplified his bitterness as he believed the future may be hopeless. Like he says in the films, he feels, against the power that has risen in the East, there can be no victory. Despite this, he continues to use the Palantir to probe Sauron's strength, searching for clues or weakness. This, in my opinion, is incredibly admirable. More bereavement was unfortunately on the horizon for Denethor, as his oldest son Boromir, for whom he adored, was discovered to be dead when his horn washed up on the riverbank. This leads on to the next point of my analysis, and another reason why people tend to dislike Denethor, because he preferred Boromir. This is probably true. There is a lot of evidence to suggest that he did prefer his eldest son, but it doesn't mean that he didn't love Faramir. He famously tells Faramir that he wishes his and Boromir's places were exchanged. The cold interpretation a lot of people take from this is that he wishes Faramir was dead instead of Boromir. Another interpretation that I lean more towards is that he simply wished Boromir was there instead, as he was a more capable warrior and commander to secure Gondor's defences, and in hindsight, Faramir may have been more suited for the mission to Rivendell. Faramir also somewhat taunts Denethor for choosing to send Boromir and unintentionally sending him to his death. 
it was most certainly a difficult father-son relationship. Denethor also thought that Boromir would have listened to him and brought the ring to Gondor, rather than heeding the advice of Gandalf instead. This is hard for Denethor to take, as he had always mistrusted Gandalf, as mentioned earlier. But the wizard and his youngest son had struck up a friendship and a mutual understanding over the years, despite his disapproval. Making the moment he calls Faramir a wizard's pupil all the more understandable. Coming away from his relationships with his sons and focusing back on Denethor himself, unlike in the films where Pippin is seen mischievously lighting the beacons of Minas Tirith, it is Denethor, through information he gained from the Palantir, who lit the beacons and sent messengers for aid. Who's to say he may have pressed an advantage in a similar way in other smaller skirmishes around Gondor in the Third Age? Furthermore, his perceptiveness and conversations with Gandalf and Faramir hint heavily that he had guessed the purpose of the Council of Elrond and was aware that the One Ring was on the way to Mordor in the hand of a witless halfling, with the goal, of course, to destroy it. This isn't impressive on its own, but remember, Sauron never for one second suspected anyone planned to destroy the Ring. The fact Denethor was powerful and resilient enough to hide this information from him when gazing into the Palantir shows how stubborn he was. Remember, he's doing all this despite thinking he has no hope for victory. Ultimately, Denethor does meet his end, committing suicide and trying to take his grievously injured son with him. It is my opinion that we should treat this action with sympathy rather than judgment. Through the death of his wife, eldest son and now what he perceives to be the imminent death of his youngest son Faramir, he is pushed to insanity. The years of using the Palantir undoubtedly contribute to this descent into madness as well. It's an interesting thought that although some believe he doesn't even love Faramir, it is his apparent death that in the end pushes him over the edge. Keep in mind, through Sauron showing him the depth of his armies, he thinks survival is impossible anyway. He sees his last act for him and his son to burn, like the kings of old. In conclusion, Denethor, mainly in secret, is taking on a huge burden, fighting almost daily battles with a being far more powerful than himself and more than holding his own. He does this with great cost to himself, both physically and mentally. Gandalf explains to Pippin that if Gondor falls or the ring is taken, then the Shire will be no refuge. This is very powerful, as Gandalf thinks Sauron reclaiming the ring and the defeat of Gondor are equal in terms of the disastrous effect either of those would have on the free peoples of Middle-earth. Who's to say a lesser steward may have fallen under Sauron's will and been defeated many years before? He keeps the darkness at bay, working against it continuously in the face of tragic personal loss that would break many men. It is this that earns Denethor his place on this list, and I hope you agree that he doesn't get the credit he deserves, and rather than being known by film fans as the one who tried to burn his son alive, he should be known as an unsung hero of Middle Earth. Thanks for watching Ring Theory. On this channel, I'll be focusing on anything and everything to do with The Lord of the Rings. Tolkien lore from the books, the original trilogy, and the new TV show. If you liked the video and want to hear more, please drop me a like and hit the subscribe button below.